And now for some more insight into this giant in the legal fraternity. Joining me in studio this evening, SABC contributing editor Vuyo Mvoko, and with him is Deputy Chief Justice Dehang Moseneke. Thanks for Bakshni. Judge, thanks very much for joining us and welcome. Good evening. A sad loss indeed. What would you say would be or will be Judge, the former Chief Justice's biggest legacy? His patriotism, his commitment to migrate our society from a terrible past to, to a new future. His jurisprudence was dedicated to, to, to finding and fulfilling those values that sit in our constitution. And his deep concern and compassion for those who are vulnerable. And these, I say, within the context of the judge that he was, and he sought to write in clear and simple terms, but you have those values run through his adjudication. What, 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 what for you would be some of his most memorable judgments? Oh, two come to mind. <clears throat> the first would be the very first judgment on the death penalty. And the question was not obscure. Does our new constitution permit capital punishment? And his answer was no. But he, he reasoned in a way different from the rest of his colleagues by taking human dignity and making it the core reason why the state ought not to assume the power to execute his own. Um, in another instance, he's called upon to decide whether a young woman may inherit from her father within indigenous or customary law. And he had no hesitation in acknowledging that our constitution is a non-sexist one. And therefore, you can't have male primogenitor. You can't have males only inheriting and thereby perpetuating inequality between men and women. Now, that's how perhaps judges and other legal minds would remember him. But for many of us ordinary mortals, he also, I mean, he presided um, over a period when um, there were these perceived tensions between the executive and the judiciary. And in certain instances, uh, there are people who thought that perhaps he didn't do as much. In other words, he didn't rise to the occasion on the issues of like, transformation, um, but also on uh, like he wasn't as, 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 as vocal, perhaps, and as strong against the executive. I, <clears throat> I'm unable to agree. I, I thought he brought incredible balance. I was, as I often say, his sidekick. I was a deputy chief justice under him. We went through quite a torrential time when there were perceived tensions. It was under his stewardship that we were called counter-revolutionary. And there were cases that were beginning to, to, to challenge the kind of relationship between the executive and the judiciary. He remained incredibly calm. He would walk in in the morning in my chambers and say, just before a case is going to start, and say, we have a difficult case this morning. But remember, Moseneke, we have to remain faithful to our oath of office. We have to do the right thing. So I thought, if you go and look at the judgments participated in, he never wavered only because on the other side, you know, the, one of the respondents or parties was the executive. Uh, we went through a difficult time um, then, and yet he remained a, quite a good leader. Let me just finish off the point. He chaired the JSC for all of the years that he was Chief Justice, and I think transformation proceeded, albeit not dramatically, but in, indeed proceeded. Lastly and very briefly, Judge, what would you say to a young lawyer or someone fresh out of school? What would you ask them if there was one thing they would, you would ask them to take out of the life of this giant? What would that be? Just sheer patience and hard work. Our young people require everything to be instant. They require success and benefits to be instant. He starts at 14 and hacks away at a long, painful career, and he ends up chief justice. 
the more he rose, the more humble he became. And he truly embraced human solidarity. He cared for other people, both as a human being, as a friend, and as a judge. So in many ways, he was the epitome of a real gentleman, a good judge, and a great patriot. Judge Musanaka, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm.